Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome. Your Excellencies, uh, welcome. The last ballot was cast in the early hours in the Arcadia Swim Bad uh, voting station in Tuane, thus marking the conclusion of voting in the national and provincial elections 2024. True to its undertaking, the Commission assisted all voters that were in the queue at 2100 hours. Just after midnight, the Commission announced the first result. This was, this was in a voting district in the Winima Tigizela Mandela municipality in the Eastern Cape. For all intents and purposes, counting procedures have now been concluded with only a few voting, station, voting stations reported to still be counting at around three. The process of the results compilation entails ensuring accuracy and validation of those results. This process involves scanning each result slip to create an image of that slip, a double-blind capture of each result, auditing of the result slip by independent auditors. The result system has also been externally audited and political parties and candidates who desired had occasion to also audit the result system. By, 14, by 1,600 hours, results had been concluded for 22.6% of the 23,292 voting district, which represents 2.3 million votes cast. As a result, a result is considered complete only when a result slip has been scanned into an image, captured onto the result system, audited by independent auditors, and has gone through the automated results exception parameters. The rate of result capture is as follows. The Houghton province has captured 28%, Limpopo 26%, Northwest 36%. The leading pack is Northern Cape at 63%, the Free State 56%, KwaZulu Natal, 23%. Mpumalanga Province, 42. The Eastern Cape, 58. And the Western Cape, 57. So that is a status in, as it relates to capturing, not necessarily uh, auditing and exception handling. The Electoral Commission thanks the re real heroes of the 2024 national and provincial elections. These are South Africans who stood in the queues and electoral staff who worked tirelessly to process the vote. The commitment and patience shown by the voters and electoral staff demonstrate their commitment to our electoral democracy. The process to finalize results of each voting station unfolds as follows. Once the results have been counted and finalized, the presiding officer and party agents will, in the presence of observers, sign the result slip, which will then be placed in a temper evident bag and transported to the local capturing site. At the results capture inside center, a check and a balance process will ensue. This includes checking that the result slip is in the correct form, has details of the voting stations, and those of the presiding officer, as well as the voting station unique barcode. It is then captured onto the system using the double blind capture method. 
Using the barcode, the result slip is then scanned and the results are electronically matched with the appropriate voting district. External auditors will then audit the results to ensure that it is captured correctly. The results are then taken through the Commission's exceptions parameters, and if an exception is flagged, the result is investigated and taken through the recapture process if necessary. Once the results, are, results pass that test, it, is, it then becomes final and available to political parties, independent candidates, and yourselves as the media. Once the results are all captured and finalized, the Commission will undertake the seat calculation process based on a prescribed formula in the Electoral Act. The full list of new public representatives will be handed over to the Chief Justice once the seat assignment is concluded. While this process is pro uh, proceeding well, it is important to reflect that historically, in the first 24 hours, 80% of the results would have been finalized. However, the process in the 2024 elections has been slowed down by the third ballot, particularly in metropolitan areas. According to the Electoral Act, the Commission has seven days within which to announce the results. We have always been able to declare and announce the results well within this period and will endeavor to do so even on this occasion. I thank you. Thank you very much, CEO Omar Mabulo. I'm going to open the floor for questions. And please, if someone has already asked the question, I realized yesterday that uh, we repeat ourselves, ne? but let's try and, and, and keep it in. I'm going to start, let's do blocks. Blocks, I think, works better for us. I'm going to start block one, block two, and then end up with block three. May I request uh, Asharas to make sure that we're not losing any hand? I'm going to start uh, this side, Busi. Can you start there? And then once you are done, the mic will come to this block. I don't see any other, I see, are there hands at the back? All right, beautiful, I can see you. Thank you. Can we have some volume with Wissi's mic? Uh, can we please, uh, can we have another mic? Put us another mic. Thank you. Testing. Uh, thank you. Busi Chimambe, SABC News. A quick one. I just wanted to find out, when you talk about exceptions parameters that uh, will, um, yeah, please can you tell us what those comprise of? Thank you. It's Natasha Piri here from SABC News. Um, I just want to find out if any objections have been raised with um, voting yesterday. I know a lot of political parties had raised their concerns over the VMD systems, um, power cuts at some voting stations. And then, um, in regards to the second ob ob objection, in terms of the results, can you just please also talk us through that process for clarity-seeking processes? Thank you. The hand at the back, please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. It's James Campier from uh, Pretoria FM. Uh, you referred to, or rather the CEO referred to, certain voting stations where votes are still being counted. Is that in specific areas? And what was the reason for the delay that these um, still votes being counted at this stage? Thank you very much. Um, can we move to this block, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca Davis, Daily Maverick. Can you tell us, was anyone turned away from voting? Secondly, what percentage of presiding of officers had experience previously in elections, if you know? And thirdly, we heard at least one account of a presiding officer yesterday being fired on the spot in KZN. How many presiding officers were fired yesterday? Thank you. 
Good evening, Paul Vecchiato from Bloomberg. Um, can you give us some indication on any objections to the vote counting uh, whereabouts? So in other words, uh, the, the observers looking, asking for recounts again. How many times have you um, seen this, what, what, the, and the, what the impact that is on the final vote count? Thank you. Um, I'm Itumeleng from The Citizen. Um, firstly, I'd like to ask, uh, based on the comments of ANC Chairperson Gwede Mandashe, that the strong uh, numbers in KZN are because of tribal votes, are, are we able to tell uh, what nationalities of people voted uh, you know, in those elections? Um, and then I'd also like to ask about Orania uh, in the Northern Cape. Is there diversity of votes there? Thank you. Hi, Mohammed Hussein from News24. Um, could you tell us there are, there's been multiple reports of voters being turned away from voting stations despite having updated their details and received confirmation of that change. But when they appeared at the specific voting stations, officials told them their details were not reflected on the IEC systems. Thanks. Uh, my name is Nomen yeah, Masungu. We're taking the last one from this floor. Uh, Norman Masunguin from City Press. Okay. Now that the voting is controlled, uh, uh, you have started counting. Um, can you share with us, in terms of the voter turnout, the numbers? Um, what are we looking at? And when you compare to 2019, would you call it a success and why? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. May we pause? On that note, we'll take the last questions from third block when we come back. CEO, can we respond to the first block of questions? And then we take the last round, which will be the last block. Chairperson Ndate Musotumiapia, thank you very much. Good afternoon, friends, uh, countrymen, countrywomen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it, is, it is good to see you um, with, with the hand that you lend to this, to this process. We know that um, the, this election, you would, like us, want to see concluded well. I'm not going to deal with all the, the, the questions. There are certain kinds of questions that obviously um, will be dealt with by the CEO, but there are others. That, that members of the commission would need to deal with. And those are the ones that I, I intend dealing with. But perhaps the last question um, that, that deals with voter turnout. And I imagine, um, my brother, you, you've been accredited as the media that would be available to you because every result has. The point we made last night, and I want to underscore that point because it's an, it's an important point that you raise. Every result that's on the board will tell you a complete story. It will tell you how many uh, voters are registered there, how many valid votes were counted, um, what were the spoiled ones, and what was the voter turnout. It is not the same from one place to the other. At the end of this exercise, we are going to deal with voter turnout as a composite number. But for now, you would be able to say, with the results that have been finalized, what proportion of those results um, do have, uh, and what, what is their, their voter, voter uh, turnout. The questions I want to deal with um, as well are uh, the, the issues relating to objections. As you know, there are objections that were raised um, throughout the day at the voting stations with presiding officers. Those objections have been dealt with by the presiding officers. There are a few that members or, or whoever objected or raise that objection, say, well, I have heard um, my objection has been fully dealt with, or I'm not satisfied with this. Those kinds of objections are being sent to the commission, and we have, we have received those 
we, we are, in fact, spending time dealing with them. But I must indicate they're very insignificant uh, in number. Um, this is not dealing with other c categories of objections that ordinarily the law provides must be raised before um, uh, 2100 hours tomorrow. The, the third issue that I thought I would deal with, um, and Golubi, I think, I think this is an issue that I, I thought I should just deal with because I'm, I'm here. Um, it's, it's the comment, uh, the citizen, that, that you raised uh, about uh, our comment on the ANC chairperson and uh, diversity of votes in Orania. I think on the first one, I certainly don't have. We, we have been very tough. And I think um, the best person would be the ANC chairperson, um, in truth. Uh, but we haven't had, and I, I think um, it would not be uh, correct. I think people vote where they are ordinarily resident. Um, we don't do, and there is no requirement in law for us to go and do an analysis of so-and-so resides there. And you know, when they reside there, um, the address, uh, you know, provides that they live in that area. That's really what we do. And, and so it does not engage um, for one area of the country diversity and an, an, another area no diversity. Uh, those are the ones I thought I should deal with. Uh, in the, the question related to exceptions. Um, there are um, a different genre of uh, objections which are uh, system generated. Um, there are um, ob uh, um, exceptions that relate to voter turnout. In other words, the system sets a certain parameter to say if there's turnout of more than 100%, as an example, it will be an exception that requires uh, an investigation. Secondly, the second genre is if a party gets 200 votes on the provincial ballot and get two votes on the national ballot. It doesn't mean it's necessarily incorrect, but it calls for caution. Hence, it raises um, an, uh, an objection. Um, The, the stations at which uh, counting was happening at around three include those that had voted until much late, uh, including Acadia Swembad, including places such as Johannesburg uh, City Hall, um, Devon uh, City Hall, and the like. So um, those are some of the stations that uh, had a huge um, uh, counting endeavor um, uh, to make. Re remember that um, the quantum to count um, at those stations is influenced by two factors. One, the fact that uh, those stations are counting three ballots, and two, that there's a high turnout. So when in the past it would have taken, let's say, two hours to conclude the counting, um, in the present case it would take three and a half hours and so, and so on. So those really, um, I, I presume that at this stage uh, the counting process may in fact be concluded. Were any um, voters turned away? Indeed, there may be instances where uh, voters may be turned away for a myriad of reasons. Um, it may be that um, they were not at the correct voting station. In terms of the Electoral Act, you, you vote where you are registered unless you, you had um, a, a Section 24A approved. In instances where um, a person had uh, a proof that uh, they had applied for a, a Section 24A. Those were, were investigated if they were brought to the, to the attention and where a ballot was due. 
it was given. Um, recounts are not necessarily authorized um, by the Commission unless the, uh, the results slip had been concluded, um, but if still within the confines of a voting station, uh, party agents together with the presiding officer will find one another on the necessity or otherwise um, for, for recounts. Um, however, if in the process of um, investigating a, an exception, it becomes necessary to uh, order a recount, it can also be re reordered by the Commission, but in the context of finalizing um, a result in the system. I think all questions are answered. Thank you. I'm going to go to block three for the last questions for this press briefing. Thank you, Kate. Um, Faith Daniels from ENCA. I'd like to find out just a sentiment from the IEC if you are satisfied with how things progressed um, yesterday and the counting at the moment, given the fact that you are being criticized um, by members of the public and political party agents, saying that um, things really should have run smoother and um, we were well aware of the third ballot and the fact that that would have some sort of impact. Thanks. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Olu Funta and I work for International Idea. Um, just a quick question on the role of the auditors in the results management uh, process. If you could throw more light on that and specifically to let us know, does the IEC cover the cost of those um, auditors in the process? Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, Diane Hawker from Deutsche Welle. The question relates um, to the IEC staff and the training that they received. A lot of the complaints that we've been hearing from members of the public and also issues witnessed on election day, it did seem like there were issues in terms of the understanding by staff in different voting stations as to what should happen if the uh, machines didn't work. Some people were told, no, we can't continue or uh, in some stations, we heard of voting stopping completely when it shouldn't have. Um, is the ICC concerned or does it have any comment on the level of training that it gave its staff ahead of this election? That's about it. Um, I request um, can I? Pilady. Are you done, Ceci? Sorry, can I ask a question, please? Uh, Rachel Savage from The Guardian. Uh, he I can, can hear you. Can you just raise your voice properly? Rachel can Savage you? from The Guardian. Um, I was wondering if I could ask a follow-up question about turnout. Um, is the IEC able to give us a more precise projection of um, final turnout, and can you say for sure whether turnout increased compared to the 2019 national elections? Thank you. Thank you very much. Colleagues, please let us not repeat the questions. I'm only going to take the questions from the online platform um, as we wrap up. CEO, I see a lot of wavering, waving at the back. Pilady, do you have any online questions, please? Um, we've got two questions online. One is from Bongam Tembu from Lokshin FM. The IEC has vowed to take action after 474 out of 500 registered parties failed to submit audited financial statements. What actions will the IEC take against those parties going forward? And the last one is from Ndivuo Mlaudzi, Future Stars Media. There had been reports of large number of voters being turned away just after 9 p.m., especially in the metropolitan areas. Has the commission been aware of that? If so, what measures are being done to hold those accountable? Two, were more um, resources allocated to voting stations that had no longer turnout, what? That had no longer turnout of voters. I think, yeah. Say Thank that you. again, Piladi, sorry. 
Yeah, I think okay, there's a slow time here. here. Mm -hmm. So what it measures? says way more resources, way more resources allocated to voting stations that had, I think it's lower turnout of voters, okay. not longer. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we, we get you. Uh, CEO. Thank you for for those important questions and. Uh, um, we, we appreciate them. The critique of, a critique of the Commission and our view. Our view is that we should never um, be defensive. Is that we are going to listen to and observe the things that are being raised um, and deal with them from where they are raised in the best interest of the work we do and the work that this country expect that all of us will do. We note, though, that there is critique that is fair and critique that is not fair. But at this point, it, it doesn't really matter. And I want to, I want to really indicate something I had. Um, you know, I had the opportunity this morning to, to hear parties that are contesting answering journalists on television about where they are at. And they truly captured that moment well, not just for themselves, but for everyone who at this point is working hard in this election. Some of them said this is the most anxious moment for them. And they said we want this work to conclude so that we know the outcome. That's where the commission is at. We are not looking at who's saying what and what, who's doing what. We are looking at, let's focus on this task. Let's get it done in a manner that will provide everyone an opportunity to deal with a complete picture. At the moment, we are trying to deal with a picture that is it's half-baked, and in fact, maybe not even half-baked. It is still in the oven. And so we want to ensure it gets out of the oven. We take note of what is being said. The things we can deal with, obviously, we will deal with. But criticism, um, it's not an issue we are going to complain about now. Um, we, we, will, we will deal with. The second issue I want to, to, to raise with that is that We have, we have voices that are speaking here, but we have voices that have been speaking consistently in the stations yesterday. As results come in, those voices are seen, party agents, um, observers, and others. And I want to raise this and say, I understand that the first set of observers would issue their results or their observations publicly from tomorrow. I think it's also an important area what, that one has to appreciate and listen to. But there's also a third area that we need to say. We are still in the period that is regulated by the ele electoral code of conduct. The election results have not been declared, and the code is clear. It holds true, it is valid, until we declare the outcome of the results. And we urge every one of the, polit you know, all political contestants, parties and independents, and their supporters, to please be reminded that this matter is just as live as the results that we have to complete. The last issue I wanted to deal with, in fact, I, c I could deal with the other one because it's also straightforward, projection of voter turnout. May I answer this with an analogy? If you asked a judge 
judge so and so, you're going to hear this matter, you've been allocated to hear this matter, or you are hearing this matter, but it's not concluded. What's, what do you think the outcome is gonna be? What do you think the judge is gonna say? They'll say no. We don't deal with that matter in that manner. For us, the results can never be like a poll. We can never project. We've got to deal with the real thing. And so I'm asking, and I really want to ask sincerely, to say, where you have the results, you don't even need a projection because that, that voter turnout is there. But for us, the picture must be complete and we must then comment on that complete picture. Party funding, someone asked the question. Um, we have failed to take action on, on political parties. And I think if I understood the question correctly, that matter, that understanding was incorrect from, from the person asking the question. We have in fact dealt with that matter conclusively and the political parties that were impacted um, are dealing with that matter as a consequence of, of what the courts have directed we should do. I, I really thank you um, for, for these sincere questions, and I want you to know that we are hard at work to conclude this work. You haven't seen us, I imagine, on this floor mostly today, but we have been engaging with these things because we do want to keep our heads focused to conclude this work and for us to be completely accountable and open to you on all the questions that do mean a lot to you and mean a lot to us. I thank you very much indeed. No, Jefferson dealt with it. Um, no, thank you. Th thank you very much. The training of staff. Um, staff were trained over um, a period of four days. They had to complete uh, a number, a series uh, of modules, um, understanding the role of the commission understanding the registration process, the counting process, the voting process, um, and so on. All these um, are modules that they, they, they had to do. They further had to do practicals um, in terms of how to do the voting station layout, how to configure the ballot box, ballot compartments, uh, and, so, and so on. Now, I did indicate that um, staff were recruited on the basis of an agreed recruitment and selection criteria. That, um, that criteria and selection, uh, that selection, recruitment and selection criteria were agreed to with political parties in the National Political Liaison Committee. Of necessity, the, that policy had to take account of the pervasive unemployment in the country so that those, especially young people who are unemployed, are given an opportunity um, to, to work, do something positive for their country, um, and so on. But of course, when you take uh, people who are unemployed and perhaps with no previous uh, work experience, it does impair a bit your, your, the quality of the process that you, uh, you manage. Hence, our position has always been that you need, in the management echelon of voting stations, experienced staff people who have done things and so on, and supplement those then with uh, people that may be unemployed. So it is not an either or scenario, but it's a confluence of those two imperatives that must be brought together. The results auditors, they are appointed by the commission following a, a competitive procurement process. 
uh, but they are independent. It's a consortium consisting of three independent audit firms. What does their role entail? The looking at the original result slip from the voting station against what is captured in the system and the checking if there are discrepancies. And indeed, if there are no discrepancies, each auditor has a unique audit, audit code which they input into the system confirming the correctness of the result. Only once that has happened is that result relayed into the results um, a database. And uh, because we procure them, we pay for them. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back later in the evening when we update on results. I must release the leadership of the Electoral Commission. On our ground, we've got officials that need their decisions. Bommele Bontate, Commissioners, CEO, you are released. Thank you very much. HPM press briefing. Thank you very much.